In 2009, my church choir recorded the song, There's a River Flowing in My Soul, by Rose Sanders, now known as Fire Rose Touré. Rose is a prominent civil rights activist, activist and attorney in Selma, Alabama. When I connected with Rose in 2010 about securing permission for the recording, she invited our choir to come to Selma to sing for the 45th anniversary of the 1965 Voting Rights March. She was the lead organizer. Our friends from Corinthian Baptist Church, a predominantly African-American congregation in Nashville with whom we have been celebrating MLK Sunday for the past 20 years, enthusiastically accepted our invitation for a joint choir bus trip to Selma. We set out early on a March Saturday morning, making our first stop at the Civil Rights Museum in Birmingham. It was in that museum that the cracks in the walls between us began to open. When confronted with the iconic white and colored water fountains, the stories of lived experience of racism and segregation began to flow like a river. No longer were these stories I had simply read or seen movies about. They were and are the stories of people I know, people I have come to love. A woman from Corinthian Church told the story of how she, as a young pregnant woman, was forced to give up her seat on a bus to a white woman. She told of her pain, her embarrassment, her shame, and her anger at God that such a thing could have happened. But in spite of her pain, she reached out in love, finding the courage to affirm her own somebodiness, sharing her story. On Sunday morning of that weekend, we boarded the buses for the journey from Montgomery to Selma. Along the way, we told stories of the march 45 years earlier. We remembered Viola Liuzzo and James Reeb. We honored the life of Jimmy Lee Jackson, whose death was the catalyst for the march. We sang and we prayed and we remembered. And in the midst of it all, we didn't notice the detour sign that would have directed us to the church where we were supposed to gather. Our bus eventually made its way to the foot of the Edmund Pettus Bridge, only to find it blockaded by police in the very same spot where National Guardsmen had beaten back that first group of protesters 45 years earlier. The bus got very quiet as the officers approached and asked our intentions. We told them where we were headed. After a brief conference, the officers informed us that they would be giving us an escort to the church, and two officers, one white and one black, fired up the lights and the sirens on their motorcycles and took us across that river into Selma like we really were somebody. In relief and glee at the way times have changed, our bus broke out into laughter and song. Something happened that day as we marched and sang with over 30,000 souls who also claimed their somebodiness that afternoon. Love reached out and helped us write a new chapter in a story that has no end. Now, the relationship between our two churches is not always easy. But those of us who were there for those momentous days know that we were changed simply by showing up. We were changed by the vulnerability we shared with one another, by the power of music and memory. We were changed by our love for one another. We were changed by that river that flowed into, among, and through us. There's a river flowing in my soul. There's a river flowing in my soul, and it's telling me that I'm somebody. There's a river flowing in my soul, in my heart. There's a river flowing in my heart. There's 